What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Saturday and welcome to Ask TNH Live. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and we have Instagram right here, uh, you know, doing doing our live questions. If you do not follow us already on Instagram, you should go ahead and do so right now uh, at Theo and Harris. That way, not only can you be up to date with what's going on behind the scenes, uh, but you will be able to you know ask questions here on uh, on Instagram Live. Uh, and if you have any questions, this would be the perfect place for them to be answered. So that's it. Let's get into today's episode. Would you be interested in viewing my watch collection? I'm 16 years old and have a vintage Longines, uh, Swatch, and Hoyer. Yes, I would be very interested uh, in, in looking at in your collection, uh, reviewing it, and giving some recommendations. That would be awesome. Uh, send it to me at info at theoandharris.com. Weeks of cover, uh, just asked on Instagram. Just asked, he wants to buy an 1803 uh, for his wife, uh, and how small can the bracelet be made? Uh, one, your wife is a very lucky woman, but I bet you're also a very lucky guy, uh, unless you're a lesbian, in which case you're a very lucky girl as well. Um, not as well as a guy, but... You see, you see what I mean? Um, so, tiny wrists. You can make uh, an 1803 bracelet or any bracelet, a small, uh, most bracelets, as small as you would like. Uh, I'd be happy to size it for you. It costs, I think, 100 bucks uh, to have it welded, um, but then it can literally be any size you'd like. I've done that twice. Uh, so, it's not easy, and a lot of places won't, a lot of jewelers won't do it for you, um, but we have. Uh, the capabilities to have that done. So shoot me a message. I'd be happy to also source you your, your 1803. So just shoot me an email at info at theoandharris.com if you're looking for any watch, particularly Rolex, because that's what we see most often. Cool. Um, best size tank to share with the wife? 27 millimeters, question mark? Uh, I don't know why I said question mark. Um, yes, believe it or not, a 27 millimeter uh, uh, Cartier tank um, is surprisingly comfortable on the wrist as long as you are kind of, um, oh, if you're okay with wearing small watches, it's a lot bigger than it sounds. You know, I had a 27 millimeter Santos Dumont that honestly felt like this Vacheron Constantine, which is 34 millimeters. I don't know how that's a reality. I, I, I really don't know how that makes any sense, but they're surprisingly uh, similar uh, in, in kind of wearability. Opal dial day date, please, if you can source. What is Opal? Is that that, is that that? Google, can you Google Opal? What did it sell for at Phillips? That's a really good question. Now, you know what? I can't even find it. It's not a big deal. Whatever, I'm sure it was way out of my price range. There are a lot of really cool day dates though. Uh, Phillips day date auction was probably one of the coolest auctions I've ever, you know, seen. Uh, they sold like genuinely ugly watches for astronomical amounts of money. And it's not because they stole it. They, they, were, they didn't, you know, they weren't lying. Uh, you know, they weren't stealing people's money. They just created this incredible marketing hype uh, around Yes, admittedly very rare watches. Uh, but to me, at least in my experience, um, and what the f do I know, once again, uh, at least in, in, in my experience, rarity is not the only, th you know, rarity on its own, you know, it cannot demand premiums like that, typically in my experience. So I'm limiting my statement here. Uh, rarity and desirability are two different things. Desirability can be fueled by rarity, but it's not the only factor that goes into what is desirable. You know, I, I know people that have, you know, that have sold bullshit kind of like unappealing things uh, or, or try to at rarity. You know, rarity is why you're buying it. Well, I don't really want it. You know, plenty of things are rare. You know, there, there are every you know, every affordable watch that I've ever sold on Theo and Harris has been rare. Why? Because they were made by failed companies. You know, how many, how many company names, you know, made awesome watches in the 60s and 70s, you know, but they're rare because they, they made watches for two years, you know, so, and they made, they made, 700 units, you know, so rarity isn't really that, you know, important. Uh, anyway, let's talk about uh, 2017 uh, watch time. Uh, yes, are you guys going to the watch time event? That would be awesome. Well, I'm, I'm gonna go, totally. Uh, I don't know if it's, have they even announced it yet? I'm not sure I, I, if I if they did, I wasn't invited yet, uh, but uh, but I will be there. So if you guys are gonna go to the watch time event in New York, which again, I don't think there's been a date that's been announced, it's really fun. Open bar, uh, a lot of, <laughs> it's funny, like before I even talked about watches, I said open bar. Uh, brands, you know, tremendous amount of brands be, are there. Uh, Langa's there, Nomos is there, Vacheron Constantine is there, a ton of brands are there. October 13th and 14th, there you go, it's been announced. Um, <laughs> uh, I just didn't know. I'll have to get an invite. I'm gonna shoot out an email for an invite today. Uh, so there are a ton of brands that are there. 
really cool stuff. The the vendors that are there don't sell. They are just like really willing to get you interested and passionate about their brands, which is fun because if you go into a boutique, you know, it's very they're trying to sell you and it's their job, you know, so respect. But I never really go, if I'm going to go into a boutique not to buy something and just to hang out, I'll be in there for three minutes. I want to go say hi, see something and that's it. You know, that, you know, that's, that's the whole thing. Uh, but when you're, when you're there uh, with these brands that are once again, not selling anything, it's a great experience. Uh, can anyone participate? Yes. Tickets are for sale. Uh, they're usually like a hundred bucks. Uh, I'll probably go on the Friday night. So you guys should totally come. Like I said, it's a lot of fun. Open bar, really cool. There are some really cool people. Uh, Jean Rousseau will be there, who is not a person, but the best strap manufacturer out there. Definitely dollar per dollar. You are a puss. No, you're a puss, okay? I'm just kidding. Speaking of Jean Rousseau, uh, we have two uh, Jean Rousseau straps in the watch shop at theoandhouse.com right now. The Type 1 and the Type 2. Uh, they're both handmade in France, you know, handcrafted by... I hate to say like the finest materials because it sounds so cliche, but uh, Jesus, if you actually saw these straps in the in the metal or in the leather, you would be blown away. At $165, they are not just a little bit better value than the competitors, worlds a difference uh, in value than the competitors. And that's just the truth. Uh, so that's it. Check them out in the Theo and Harris Watch Shop. Jesus, what's up, buddy? Hope you're doing uh, well. Uh, let's, let's, let's talk soon. Uh, looking forward to the new straps. Yes, and we have we have new genre source straps coming in, in, in uh, what, Oct late October. Late, right, right after right after Halloween, we'll have new genre source straps, uh, and they're going to be incredible. Seriously. They're unbelievable. I mean that with every inch of my body. I actually, we'll talk about our collaboration with John Russo real quick right now. Um, so, so Anna and I went in, Anna is our editor, for those of you who do not know. Uh, Anna is our editor and photographer and all that stuff. Uh, so we went into John Russo last uh, year, uh, and, well, not last year, a couple months ago, five months ago, uh, and we, we designed these John Russo straps and they're phenomenal. Like, you know, they're, they're some of the best straps, like I said, I've ever been able to own, nonetheless offer, you know, publicly, but, um, Anna and I definitely felt like there was a variable missing in the creative process, uh, which is my very stylish uh, mother. So uh, so we invited my mom to come. Uh, and I was like, listen, Ma, come into the city. I'll buy you lunch. Uh, let's go to Jean Rousseau. You know, come help us pick out our fall collection. You know, because I really, I'm really passionate about design and materials. It's something I'm really interested in. Uh, so this Jean Rousseau collaboration is a wonderful opportunity, not only for business and for you know brand value of my brand, but it's like an experiment. It's like it's like fun. You know, I get to go mess around with hundreds of materials and leather, I mean, leathers, exotic materials, uh, stitching. You know, a uh, uh, backside, everything, and I get to pick them. You know, so that's you know that's just I don't know a ton of fun for me at least, uh, and then offer them to the public. So it's I don't know. It's just gonna be it's gonna be awesome uh, to see your reactions to the next to the next one. So uh, that would be that would be super cool. That would be super cool. Any opinions on alpha watches? Um, no, I, I don't even know what that is, to be honest. Fake patina, my opinion on fake patina. Uh, first of all, it's called faux patina, F-A-U-X. Um, and I really, really like it. I really like faux patina. Uh, and I'm sorry uh, if you guys don't. I know a lot of people hate it with a passion. Um, to me, uh, fake patina, right, which is basically super luminova that has been colored instead of being, you know, the traditional color, which is very crisp and whitish, um, they make it custard. Uh, they make it custard because it makes it look older. Uh, it makes it look like vintage watches. Now, th the reason I don't mind that, and in fact, I like it, uh, is because it's more aesthetically appealing. And if you can change the color of something to make it look better, why not? It's like cutting off your nose to spite your face. Oh, I wish we could make it custard, but we can't because that would be robbing from vintage. No, it's prettier and that's it. Uh, if you disagree with the fact that it's, with my opinion that it's prettier, that's fine. But I have no interest in the argument uh, that is, oh, well, you can't fake aging. Yeah, you can, it looks cool. Uh, and it, it's not even like fake, it's not even faking distress. It's not even faking wear. It's just changing the color of something. Yeah, and, and the truth is, 
the vast, vast majority of anyone that sees fake patina watches doesn't even know it is fake patina. They just think it's the color of the loom. We know that because we have a skewed perspective. We know that because we collect, you know, vintage watches with real patina, you know. But you think the normal guy that walks into the, you know, uh, he walks into the Omega boutique and sees the Speedmaster is like, oh, interesting that it's brown. Do you have an issue with the fact that you totally stole that or like, you know, impersonated a vintage watch? No, nobody gives a shit. You know, so that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Live Ask Teenage. You guys are the best. Uh, I love you with all of my watch geeky heart. And thank you guys on YouTube for watching and tuning in. Uh, please do not forget to subscribe uh, to our channel uh, at Theo and Harris. Like this video if you did like it. And even if you didn't like it, like it anyway, uh, because it would help me and the Theo and Harris company. I was trying to mean that's not selfish. Uh, but uh, yes, it would really help us a ton. Uh, and that's it. See you guys uh, tomorrow.